learning objectives of this lecture are what is the morphology of RBCs? What is erythropoiesis? Explain the different steps of the formation of RBCs. How erythropoiesis is regulated? How the maturation of RBCs takes place? What are various red blood cell indices? And what is ESR? Today, we will start our new topic that is RBCs also called as erythrocytes. We know that RBCs are circular, biconcave, disc-like cells. They are non-nucleated, having no organelles within it. They can be highly deformed and they are elastic in nature. So, what are the physical dimensions of the RBCs? They have a diameter of about 7 to 8 micron meter and they are thick in the periphery is about thickness is 2 micron meter and in the center they are only 1 micron meter thick. So the average volume of the RBCs is 92 to 95 cubic micron meter. Now we will see that where they are produced. We know that in the early fetal life, in the fetal life we know that there are three stages of the gestation. First trimester, second trimester and the third trimester. Within the first trimester during the fetal life, they are produced within the yolk cell. And then in the second trimester, they are formed in the liver, spleen and the lymph nodes. And in the third trimester and after birth, they are formed in the bone marrow. Up till 20 years, they are formed in all the bones. But after the 20 years, they are formed mainly in the bone marrow of the membranous bone. What is the average count of the RBCs? They are mainly in the males, they are 5.2 million and females are 4 million per cubic millimeter plus minus 3 lakh. Now, the very important university question is what is erythropoiesis? Erythropoiesis is the process of the formation and the maturation of RBCs. We know that all cells are formed from the bone marrow and by the pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells under the influence of growth inducers and the differentiation inducers. Today, we will see only the formation of RBCs. From the pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells, colony forming unit blasts are formed and from there, the pro-erythroblasts are formed. Now, we will see the characteristics of all the stages of the formation of RBCs. What are pro-erythroblasts? Their size is almost 15 to 20 micron meter. They are big. Their nucleus size is big and inside the nucleus, large nucleoli and reticular network are present. It has a less cytoplasm and cytoplasm is blue in color because of increased RNA. You can see that cytoplasm is blue in color due to increased RNA. Now, the basophil erythroblast stage, its size is reduced than the pro-erythroblast but still bigger than the next two. Its size is almost 12 to 18 micron meter. Its nucleus size is decreased. Nucleoli will disappear. Cytoplasm is more than the previous one, but still blue in color because of RNA. Next, the polychromatophil erythroblast. Its size is reduced further. Nucleus size is decreased and the cytoplasm becomes purplish in color. That is because of increased hemoglobin. Poly means many. So, here the color changes from blue to purple due to the presence of hemoglobin. Then, the orthochromatic erythroblast. At this stage, cell division stops, nucleus size further decreases, their cell size further reduces and the pycnosis of the nucleus occurs. Pycnosis is also called as the degeneration or the lysis of the nucleus and the color of the cell becomes red due to increased hemoglobin. We can see that hemoglobin begins to appear in the polychromatophil stage, but the maximum amount appears in orthochromatic erythroblast stage than the polychromatic. So the red appearance of the cell occurs. Reticulocyte stage. In this stage, fine reticular network is evident, which is composed of RNA, and the remnants of the organelles are present at this stage. Reticulocytes will leave the bone marrow and come in the circulation. They remain in the circulation for one or two days and then develop into the mature RBCs or the erythrocytes. Here is shown the different types of RBCs in the anemias, in microcytic hypochromic anemias. This occurs in mostly iron deficiencies anemia in which RBC size is reduced, their cell volume is reduced and their MCH is reduced. 
these are the megaloblastic anemia which mostly occurs in the vitamin b12 deficiency anemia vitamin b12 is very necessary for the maturation of rbcs so immature megaloblast big size rbcs will be formed in case of vitamin b12 deficiency in sickle cell anemia cells become sickle shaped they are incapable of carrying excessive oxygen erythroblastosis fetalysis this is the condition we will study in the blood groups this is the condition of this is the condition that occurs in early neonates and rbcs are immature not capable of carrying enough oxygen in sickle cell anemia hemoglobin becomes sickle shaped which causes damage to the rbcs resulting in excessive hemolysis so unconjugated bilirubin level in the blood rises erythroblastosis fetalysis is the disease of the newborn child in which there is excessive agglutination of the rbcs resulting in excessive hemolysis so less oxygen delivery to the tissues now how the erythropoiesis is regulated there is one of the most important factor which results in the regulation of erythropoiesis that is that is erythropoietin erythropoietin is secreted mainly by the kidneys almost 90% and 10% is secreted by the liver there are certain factors that causes tissue hypoxia hypoxia is the main stimulus for the secretion of erythropoietin factors that contribute to the hypoxia or decrease tissue oxygenation are low blood volume whenever there is low blood volume there is less blood to be supplied to the uh, tissues and less oxygen will be delivered to the tissues and then more signals will go to the kidney to secrete erythropoietin whenever there is anemia anemia is deficiency of rbcs or hemoglobin deficiency so no hemoglobin will be available to supply oxygen to the tissues resulting in hypoxia that will send signal to the kidneys which will in turn secrete erythropoietin poor blood flow whenever there is sluggish blood flow or poor blood flow to the tissues there will be hypoxia which in turn send signals to the kidney to secrete erythropoietin whenever there is pulmonary disease so oxygenation of the blood will be less resulting in hypoxia and in turn erythropoietin secretion by the kidneys when erythropoietin is secreted by the kidneys it act on the hematopoietic stem cells to produce pro erythroblasts and pro erythroblast by passing through the stages of the erythropoiesis it will form mature rbcs and erythrocytes now certain materials are required for the erythropoiesis or the maturation of rbcs most important are the vitamin b12 and the folic acid vitamin b12 is required for the synthesis of one of the building blocks of dna that is triphosphate and folic acid is required because it acts as a coenzyme for the transfer of the methyl group so it has a role in dna synthesis whenever there is vitamin b12 deficiency it results in failure of the maturation of rbc so big immature megaloblast type cells will be seen in the blood also required is the intrinsic factor because intrinsic factor will help in the absorption of the vitamin b12 so whenever there is gastric mucosa damage or atrophy of the gastric mucosa it will results in decreased gastric gland secretions and lack of intrinsic factor or the hcl because intrinsic factor is required for the vitamin b12 absorption there will be vitamin b12 deficiency resulting in immature rbcs now you must know about the sources of the folic acid they may include green leafy vegetables beans whole grains legumes and others such as liver wheat egg yolk now if a patient present to you in the emergency with the anemia we have to determine about what type of anemia he is suffering for this you must know the normal values of the hemoglobin or the hematocrit or the rbcs hemoglobin in males is average is 14 to 16 grams per deciliter and the in females it is 12 to 14 grams per deciliter now hematocrit hematocrit is the percentage of the blood cells mainly rbcs also called as packed cell volume in males it is almost 47 and in females it is 42 now mcv mean corpuscular volume it is measured in femtoliters it can be determined by hematocrit 
into 10 divided by RBCs in per cubic millimeter. Males have 87 femtoliter value and females have 87. Its normal value is about 87 femtoliters. In case of microcytes, it will be less than 80 femtoliter and in case of macrocytes, it will be more than 95 femtoliter. And if it is of normal value, then they are called as normocytes. Now, MCH or mean corpuscular hemoglobin. It is measured in picograms. It is an estimate of the amount of hemoglobin in an average RBC. Its formula is hemoglobin into 10 divided by RBCs in per cubic millimeter. What is the normal value of the MCH? In males, it is almost 29 and females also 29. If the MCH value is less than 25 picograms per deciliter, then the cell is called as hypochromic. And if it is more than 30 to 35, then cell is called as hyperchromic. What is MCHC? Mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. It is measured in grams per deciliter. It can be calculated by hemoglobin into 100 divided by hematocrit. It is the relation of the hemoglobin mass in the RBC to the cell volume. Its normal value is about 34 grams per deciliter. Now, if there are certain anemias, then what happened to the RBC indices? MCV, MCH, and MCHC, if it is normal, then it is called as normocytic normochromic anemia. Normo means normal and cytic means cell, cell volume. It occurs in acute blood loss, aplastic anemias, or tumors. Now, if the MCV, MCH, and MCHC are decreased, then it results in microcytic hypochromic anemia. It means that MCV and MCHC both are reduced. Microcytic means reduced MCV and hypochromic means reduced MCHC. It mostly occurs in iron deficiency anemia, lead poisoning, or thalassemia. Now, the MCV. If the MCV is increased and MCH is normal, then it is called as macrocytic normochromic anemia. It mostly occurs in vitamin B12 deficiency, which is also called as pernicious anemia. Now, ESR. What is ESR? ESR is called as erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Has a diagnostic importance, but most important is the its prognostic importance. It is defined as the rate of the settling down of the RBCs per hour. Its value is from 0 to 20 micron meter per hour. It's most important, it is most important in its because now the ESR. What is ESR? It is the erythrocyte sedimentation rate. It is defined as the rate of the settling down of the RBCs per hour. Its normal value is about 0 to 20 micron meter. It has a diagnostic as well as prognostic importance. But most important is the prognostic importance. It is increased in all anemias except sickle cell anemia. It is increased in malignant tumors liver disease or rheumatic fever. It is decreased in allergic conditions such as polycythemia. It is decreased in allergic conditions, polycythemia, sickle cell anemia and leukocytosis. In case of tuberculosis, ESR is increased. So if we give patient anti-tuberculous therapy for 9 to 12 months, then we can determine ESR after every 15 days to check out how the therapy is working. This is called as its prognostic importance. Now, there are certain conditions whenever there is physiological increase in RBCs. That is, in age. In infants, it is more. In, in adults, it is maximum. And the number of RBCs decreases with age. Males have more count than females. In exercise, whenever there is hypoxia, there is sympathetic nervous system activation, resulting in excessive release of epinephrine or norepinephrine, which in turn causes contraction of the spleen where RBCs are normally stored. So the RBCs will be released from the spleen into the blood. Whenever there is hypoxia, partial pressure of oxygen is less, for example, in high altitudes, where barometric pressure is less. So there is more production of the erythropoietin from the kidneys 
and this erythropoietin will, will in turn act on the pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells, which in turn produce more erythroblasts, resulting in more RBCs. Whenever there is increased body temperature, it will result in increased RBCs. And anxiety, in the anxiety, sympathetic nervous system is activated, resulting in more RBC. Now, the conditions in which there is physiological decrease in RBCs. Whenever there is high bar barometric pressure, when we go at the deep sea level, there is increased barometric pressure. So, there will be less RBC during sleep and also in pregnancy because of hemodilution of the RBC. RBC count will be low. Now, the functions of the RBCs. We have done the functions of the whole blood. Now, the functions of the RBCs. We know that hemoglobin is present inside the RBCs and hemoglobin has the capacity of transporting 98% oxygen to the tissues by combining with the hemoglobin. Within the RBCs, carbonic and hydrase enzyme is present. In the absence of this enzyme, this reaction occurs, but this is very slow. So, this is involved in the functioning of the RBC. It also pro provides viscosity to the blood and it's, it gives specific gravity to the blood. It also play a role in the determination of the blood groups because antigens representing the blood groups are present on the surface of the RBCs. Thank you.